all those tabs. Is that, does that count as ASMR? No, I just look creepy. Wilson and I write poetry and novels in verse for young adult readers and today we are going to do part two of my personal library poetry collection book tour. So if you are not new to my channel you know I can be a little verbose. I'm trying to uh, shorten the amount of time I take in my intros but two quick housekeeping things. One, if you haven't seen part one I would highly recommend that you go check that one out first. Normally I don't like kicking people out of videos, but it might make this viewing experience more complete if you see part one first. In part one, I asked you guys to take a guess at how many poetry collections you think I own. So if you haven't done that and you do want to stick around and hear the answer in part two, take the time now to leave a guess down below in the comments. Last video, I guessed 127. And I just counted from the book shelf upstairs and we're at 57 and I have all of the collections, the poetry collections pulled from this shelf. So today we will finally get the total answer. The second brief thing I want to say is to all of my new subscribers, thank you so much. I got a shout out a little while ago from Laura Wrights and I saw a sweet little uptick in subscriber count from that. So shout out to Laura. And also to everybody who's new here and hanging out. And if you've watched a few videos and you do want to subscribe, please know how much I appreciate everybody hanging out on this channel with me. Here. So now let's just get straight into it. Um, you should probably make it a drinking game or add 10 extra minutes to your writing routine or something every time I say I highly recommend a collection because that happened a lot in the last video. The first collection that I have on this bookshelf, our downstairs bookshelf, is Set Music to a Wildfire by Ruth Awad. I think that this is a really lovely collection. I have a lot of handwritten notes in here just mentioning line breaks and sounds and reoccurring themes. I think it's a very tightly woven collection and I highly recommend. The second collection I have is Temper by Beth Bachman. I really like Bachman's work. It was something that was highly influential to me as a college student. I know, maybe it wasn't this one. I know I wrote in college a book review for one of Beth's collections. If I can find it, I'll leave it linked down below. We are killing it with these beautiful, vibrant, heavily saturated covers. The next book is Catrachos by Roy Guzman. And I am such a fan of Roy as a person. Um, we've connected a few times virtually and also once in person in AWP. And I think the world of them, they're definitely somebody that I consider to be a true friend in the virtual poetry sphere. So if you've read Arrow by Sumita Chakraborty, I think you might like this collection too, in terms of how varied the form is, how entrenched in literary and historical context this book is. It also explores sexual identity. So definitely recommend. This is Objects of Hunger by E.C. Belly and I picked up this book because I read one of the poems in an online journal. I think it was Visual Analysis of Grief in You and if I can find it I'll leave it down below but I loved that piece so much that I just automatically went and purchased this book and I think that's the power of reading literary journals whether you read them in print or online you'll just never know what you'll find. We have Blood Dazzler by Patricia Smith. This book in a multiplicity of voices explores the happening of and the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and as somebody who lived in coastal North Carolina for I lived in North Carolina almost all my life and then coastal North Carolina for I think six years this book is especially powerful when you've lived through a natural disaster and the fear and the uncertainty and then having to rebuild as a community. Smith also analyzes the way in which the American government was not as quick to offer support to poor and black communities who were affected by Katrina. It's a powerful collection. It is a very necessary collection. We have Space Struck by Paige Lewis. Pavlov was the son of a priest is probably my favorite poem from this collection. It's one that stays with you and you continue to think about some of the more existential philosophical themes explored in the poem 
you carry that with you into your daily life. And I think that's true of a lot of the a lot of the poems in this collection. Next we have Flashes and Verses, Becoming Attractions by Adrian Ernesto Cepeda. And Adrian is actually, um, or I am a future press mate of his. This book is published by Unsolicited Press. Adrian's actually the poet who reached out to me via Twitter when he saw that I had had a close call with another poetry contest for my manuscript. And he said, why don't you send it to Unsolicited? I think they could be a good team for you. So definitely grateful, not only to be able to read his work, but for that tip as well. Speaking of pressmates, this is Black Matilda by Justin Rogers. This came out with Glass Poetry Press, and I really like this book a lot. It reimagines a lot of the key points in, in the movie Matilda through the lens of a Black perspective, and especially the character Lavender in this book. She might have been my favorite. We have Slim Recognition of Night by Emma Howell. Emma Howell actually attended Oberlin College before I got there, um, but she passed away. She was studying abroad and she passed away at the age of 20. And her parents have created an award, a poetry award, that they grant to an Oberlin student every year. And I think my junior, my junior year was the year I won it. So I was given a copy of this book as well. And there's a lot of astute wisdom in here, especially for a speaker who's so young. So if Emma Howell is a new name to you, I highly recommend checking her out. We have Inheritance by Taylor Johnson. Speaking of Oberlin, I went to Oberlin with Taylor and I think the world of them. And I was so excited to read this collection last year. We have Glossary of Unsaid Terms by Victoria C. Flanagan. We have Diorama of a People Burning by Bradley Harrison. And this is one of my favorite, favorite chap books, hands down. If you haven't picked it up, I highly recommend it. I don't know how much extra writing time, or if you're watching this at night, how many sips of a beverage you have had at this point. But what's so cool about this collection is that it's a series of erasures and I teach this all the time or I used to when I was a teacher but I taught this all the time this has the most stunning lyrical language it is so romantic and and painful we have Belloc's Ophelia by Natasha Trethewey Bad Anatomy by Hannah Cohen. I don't know if you're watching Hannah, but if you are, hey girl, hey. We have Westerly by Will Shute. We have Magnolia by A. Van Jordan. This is also a very teachable collection in that it plays with form, it plays with voice, it's very lyrical, and there's also this narrative bent throughout the collection as well. There's a lot of historical significance, just a very nuanced, well put together collection. So check this out if you haven't already, or if you teach in any capacity, definitely recommend. This little chapbook is by a friend of mine. It's entitled Blind Spot the Rest, and it's by Evan Gray. I don't want to speak for Evan, but from what I remember of his work in grad school, he was very heavily influenced by the Black Mountain poets. So if you're into that style as well, check this out. We have Beast Girls and Other Origin Myths by Elizabeth Acevedo. We have Do Not Rise by Beth Bachman. I think this is the collection I wrote a review for in college. This is a really, I don't know if seething is the right word, but it is a very critical review of war in the Middle East under the Bush administration, and I think it's a really great collection. We have Body Moves by Tim Siebels, who has a really great reading voice. I don't know if you've ever seen him in person, but just a lot of tenor to his voice. It's really a treat to hear him read his own work. Another pressmate of mine, this is The Science of Unvanishing Objects by Chloe N. Clark. We have Blood by Shane McRae. We have Blackbirds in September by Jurgen Becker. And I'm going to be honest, I have not read this. I think there are three or four books in my collection that I haven't actually read. So I will put them aside because I probably should either read them or re-gift them or both, but I believe I got this from entering a contest with Black Lawrence Press. This is Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth by Warsan Shire. And in college, I just remember everybody loving this book. I think it was almost Plathian in some ways that it explored the self and femininity and maternal relationships. This title's a bit lengthy. This is Tell Me Again How the White Heron rises and flies across the nacreous 
River at Twilight Toward the Distant Islands by Hayden Carruth. That is a power move. I'm trying to think if I could, if I had to title a book with a 20 word title, what would it be? That's a good question. Let me know if you can come up with a 20 word title for a poetry collection down below. We have Capturing the Dead by Daniel Nathan Terry. We have Shape Shift by Sherwin. Shape Shift by Sherwin Fitzsu. A lot of S's there. We have Inland from Pamela Alexander. We have Sorrow Bread by Mark Cox. And Mark was one of my teachers in graduate school. So it was really interesting to be able to read through a collection because this is a collected work of his previous collections. So it was really interesting to be able to see somebody's themes and style shift over a 30 year period. We have To Those Who Are Our First Gods by Nicole Brown, How to Cook a Ghost by Logan February. We have Citizen by Claudia Rankine. And I know there's a lot of narrative form in here um, or more prose, but it is entitled An American Lyric. So I'm counting it for the collection. We have Witch Wife by Kiki Petrosino. I love this book so much. This is one of those collections that you read and you're upset that you didn't write it yourself. I didn't know how to end my collection Yalubi about my Czech heritage until I read a Kiki Petrosino poem and then wrote kind of a response piece to it. And I haven't read her collection White Blood yet. I've seen her do a reading from it, but I definitely want to check that book out as well. We have Faithful and Virtuous Night by Louise Gluck, Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith, Astoria by Melina Morling, The Far Mosque by Kazem Ali, another Natasha Trethewey book, this one is Native Guard. We have The Zones of Paradise by Lynn Powell. We have Dark Elderberry Branch. Look at all those tabs. Is that, does that count as ASMR? I don't know, I just look creepy. So this is Dark Elderberry Branch, and it's it's titled as a reading by Jean Valentine and Elia Kaminsky, but they go through and it includes quite a lot of poems by Marina Tesfateva. We have Someone Else's Wedding Vows by Bianca Stone. And I believe Bianca did the artwork for the collection herself, because I think she's also a visual artist as well. We've got a few chapbooks here. We have Memoria by I was gonna say Shelley Flowers. Shelley Flowers reads and writes on YouTube, but Michelle Lizette Flores. We have Parrot Flower by Kimberly Ann Priest. This next chapbook is really cool. It's by the Chinese poet Zhu Zhu. And I saw him when I was studying abroad. It was the Prague Writers Festival. And this collection has his work in English and in Czech. Another Natasha Trethway collection, this is Thrall. We have Nicole Cocott's poem for the end. I'm trying to read it backwards in my, <laughs> my viewfinder, it's not working. Poem for the End of Time and Other Poems. We have read by Chase Bergrun, and I really liked this collection. This is an erasure of Dracula and the way that Chase was able to create a new voice and a new narrative through the existing text, the pre-existing text. You know what's coming, highly recommend. We have Many Restless Concerns by Gail Brandeis, and I bought this book also from Black Lawrence Press because y'all know they're the only ones who get my money. Um, <laughs> this is this collection imagines the voice of um, the victims of Countess Bathroy, and I thought that this would be a really cool piece to read while I was working on my Marie Lafarge collection. We have C.A. Conrad's The Book of Frank, Pelican by Emily O'Neill, this is Late Wife by Claudia Emerson, Notes on Vanishing by Cami Pajoya, DM Me Mother Darling by my friend Alexa Duran, Stone Fruit by Gardener Dorton, Diaries of Exile by Yanis Ritsos. This collection, or just his work in general, I really like, and there's a response poem to one of his poems in Yalubi as well. And finally, the last one is the Tribute Horse by Brandon Psalm again. Oh, this is Night Boat Books. They also get my money. I love this collection, highly recommend. So you can, we can stop the challenge now. This will be the final one. Um, this is really beautiful. It explores immigration and the speaker's Chinese heritage and language theory and translation. It was also very important to me when I was writing my collection, Yulubi, definitely recommend. So if you didn't already, go ahead Take a final guess to how many poetry collections 
and chapbooks, we're including chapbooks, how many poetry collections you think I own. You can go ahead and watch part one, but just don't cheat and count. So in total, I have 113 different collections. Is that too much? <laughs> Is that a lot? I don't know. It feels like a lot. I guess 127. So I was definitely in the ballpark. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. If you want to like and subscribe, know that that is super appreciated. I started this channel because now that I, I still work in higher ed, but I no longer teach, I really wanted an outlet to be able to talk about books with people. So let me know down below which of the collections in my collection you are most excited to check out. And based on if you got a sense of my literary taste, what books do you think I should check out? Now, thanks for hanging out, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.